um, I am looking for residents also. I, I have a month. I've been given a month after being a stay-at-home mom for 10 years to find work and a home. Welcome to Rebel Chaser. My name is Gail, and I have a clip for you from Judge Patricia Fassett at the Cowlitz County Superior Court in Washington. This is actually part two of the low and low case, the case in which the woman is pregnant. She left her husband, got pregnant, then moved back into their home, the, the husband and wife's home, kicked the husband out and is making the husband pay for her, her boyfriend, their new baby, her, their two kids, plus another child that she had previous to that. Well, this is part two, and all I can say is, if you're going through a divorce, you need an attorney like this attorney, Georgia Petrie. She's awesome. Let me know what you guys think. Low and low, 233-004-5108, another presentation of an order. Actually, Your Honor, the presentation portion of this is should be struck. We, uh, The court signed off and the orders were filed November 28th. But we oh, just right. have the remaining matter of child support pending. All right, that's not what it's, and that's not what uh, Odyssey says. Uh, I do see that the temporary family law order was signed off on by Judge Scudder on the twenty eighth of November, along with what appears to be a uh, temporary parenting plan. Um. Ms. Powers did file a memorandum of authorities regarding child support. Commissioner Carmi set the issue of child support over to today from the November 21st hearing. Correct. Okay. All right. Well, who wants to start? I'll go ahead since the child is receiving... TANF benefits, the children are receiving TANF benefits. Um, we filed our proposed worksheets with the court on November 13th. Uh, the father's income is his actual income calculated from his September 29th, 2023 wage stub. Um, and his deductions were taken from the, the same wage stub. The mother has no employment security data and um, indicated she's not working and she's a current TANF recipient. So we imputed her at minimum wage 32 hours per week. The issue is that we've got a joint parenting plan, but because the kids receive TANF, the court is unable to enter a residential credit. Um, so all of this would result in a transfer payment from the father to the mother of $1,787 a month. Tanif began at the end of August and as of today is still active. All right, Ms. Petrie. Thank you, Your Honor. Your Honor, we can see that the state is correct regarding the deviations in this situation where mother is, is receiving TANF benefits. However, in my review of RCW 26-1975, the court has discretion as the options stated within the code are, is not an exhausted list. Section one states reason for deviation include, but are not limited to the following and goes into the criteria. And then section four also references the discretion of the court in considering the extent to which the factors would affect the support obligation. My only argument here, your honor, is that of equity. My client is named the primary parent, um, and as such, he is being obligated to pay support to the non-custodial parent under a 50-50 residential schedule. To not grant a deviation would result in an inequitable order of the support. Given that my client is the primary parent, I must question mom's actual qualification for TANF benefits at this point. I'm also slightly concerned because the Department of Child Support is already putting in, already put in a wage assignment order without... Um, this order being entered, uh, we did alert them to the fact that there was a child support action pending. Um, again, the outcome proposed by the state, though, will result in an order that is more in favor of one party to the other's detriment. Uh, my client is moving back into the marital home. He is going to be responsible for maintaining that home. Mother does. Mother is cohabiting with a significant other. Um, he is not working. 
So, you know, the idea that my client should need to support him as well is not exactly an equitable outcome either. Um, it's just unfair, Your Honor, that the primary parent, just because she's getting TANF benefits, um, would have to pay so much in support. So we are requesting a deviation. Uh, however, the court wants to label it. Uh, we are asking the court to exercise its discretion in awarding a deviation um, so as to not overburden my client and unjustly enrich mother. All right, thank you. Uh, Ms. Lowe, anything that you would like to add at this point? Yes, Your Honor. Um, I can't afford counsel at this time. I was a stay-at-home mom for the last 10 years, and that was agreed upon between me and the petitioner. I don't have a track record right now of employment. I have been looking for work every single day since I applied for TANF. Um, I am looking for residence also. I, I have a month. I've been given a month after being a stay-at-home mom for 10 years to find work and a home. My partner is not living with me currently. He is my boyfriend. He is my partner. But I don't have a home right now, Your Honor. I'm in the marital home until January 1st. So I'm scrambling to try and figure out what I can do and trying everything that I can to find housing and get back on my feet. But I certainly do qualify for TANF. That's why they approved it. Um, and I'm also exempt right now. If I didn't want to look for work, I wouldn't have to right now technically because I'm exempt because we have a one-year-old who I also have to find daycare for. But I am looking for work. I've even applied for DoorDash. Um, I'd also like to note that the petitioner never had problems in the past with paying for the mortgage and paying for our lifestyle. He makes a significant amount of money, always has, which is why we agreed that I would stay home. Also, I want the courts to know that for the last four months, the petitioner has been depositing $250 to $350 in my account every Thursday, and he was calling it alimony and support. And that's on top of um, what the state's asking for. I don't think the state is out of line in what they're asking for in child support, given his income. And they've submitted all of that. And certainly when I find work, my TANF will be adjusted and go down. But at this time right now, he is the breadwinner. He always has been. And I have to go from being at home, being a stay-at-home mom with three kids, to making everything work. So I don't know. I feel that it's fair, Your Honor. But I will leave it up to you to decide what you think is fit. Thank you. Brief rebuttal, Your Honor. Yes, go ahead, Ms. Petrie. Your Honor, I know Ms. Loth seems to think that she should be allowed to stay home forever. Um, however, she has to remember that she's the one that made the decision to end this marriage and move on. And she's the one that put herself in this position due to her choices. Uh, and if the court would, ref would refer to the recording of the last hearing that we did, I mean, and also in the declarations. Um, there are not three children before the court today. There are only two. She is, my client is only responsible for two children. Um, with regard to this case and the child support issue, I am requesting again, a deviation, $1,700 is a great deal to have to pay um, given the situation and the, my client's role as custodial parent. Thank you. All right, thank you. So um, I did review the um, minutes from the 21st hearing. Uh, I was able to, uh, as Powers pointed out, when they filed their information, I went through the proposed worksheets from the state. Uh, reviewing the income uh, and the information provided about the deviation based on the TANF. Uh, it is a relatively shared parenting plan based on my quick review of what was entered. And I don't see anything indicating that at this point
no spousal support was ordered. Is that correct? Correct. All right. Correct. So yeah. This is uh, simply for uh, support for the children that are essentially half, a little over half time with father and almost half time with mother. Uh, so based on every, half, and half equally, Your Honor. Don't interrupt me, please. Uh, so everything I've reviewed, uh, I am gonna, I am gonna make a slight deviation. I'm gonna order fifteen hundred dollars a month in support, child support, based on the numbers. And um, I guess Miss Powers, would that, would the state want that starting December one or November one? Um, I think we would request November 1 because the children have been on TANF um, since, since the end of August. So. Uh, Your Honor, there is an issue about arrears. The current um, Department of Child Support action, there, the administrative action, is going after him for back payments back to August. Um, that shouldn't be happening. And at, at, at a minimum, he should be receiving a credit for the payments that he voluntarily paid, admitted to today herein on the record by Ms. Lowe. Um, he should be credited back those payments for the ones he's already been made in, in any calculation that DCS might make. Ms. Powers, does state have any position on that? Well, um, the difficulty is that in terms of a court order, the petition, I believe the petition in this action was filed in October. So the court's earliest child support date would be November 1st. Um, under the wax, the DCS has the ability administratively to go back. Uh, before that, certainly any court order that's entered as of the day that it starts will supersede any administrative order. Um, it, I, I guess I'm not being very helpful here. Um, I'm just concerned that the child support garnishment is already going into effect with my client's employer at this time when this order wasn't even made. And they're going after arrearages that should not be gone after. If so some attention are, needs to be paid to the accounting on this case. If wages are already being taken from an employer, it means an administrative order has been entered. Um, if you give me a minute, I can verify that really fast. I'm sorry to take up the court's time with this, but I just need to make sure my client isn't getting double dinged. No, I, that makes sense. It looks like there was an administrative order that was entered on November 16th, effective August 30th. Um, the father would have had the ability to participate administratively. Um, the administrative order will be superseded by this. Although if our start date is November 1st, then the admin would still remain in effect from August 30th through October 31st. And what did they set the amount at? What is he being garnished a month? Um, they set the transfer payment at $1,949 a month. Um, and it looks like there's also a medical premium that they set of 487. <clears throat> A month? Yes. So that's about five grand for two months that he's supposedly in arrears that they entered? No, they, they set current support at 1949 a month plus 487 a month in medical. Yeah, which is about $2,500, and that's for two different months. Correct. Sept September and yes. October. Yes. So almost right around $5,000 that they consider him in arrears even though there was nothing entered it's by the showing court. it's showing 5972.74 if the court enters an order that covers the dates of august 30th on it will supersede the whole administrative order um well i don't know if i have the authority to enter an order that predates the filing of the cause I, I don't know that you do either. Uh, do there's... The, court, the court can set arrears at this point effective, at, you know, set the arrears as zero effective November 1st. Would would that supersede, Ms. Powers? If, I, if the court set a specific amount of arrears 
as of um, November 1st or the filing date of this cause? If the court entered um, a judgment that said it was for arrears that covered from August 30th on, it would supersede the administrative order. Um, I would object to zero since the kids did receive TANF at that time period, but that would be a way to supersede the order. Except that my client was giving her around over $1,000 a month voluntarily, and she was receiving TANF. Your Honor, the money that the petitioner was giving me, he said, was for alimony, not for child support. And he also said he wasn't going to pay back TANF. We both got the same paperwork, me and the petitioner. And he came to me and said that he thought it was unfair. Objection, Your Honor. Pay it. This is a, it's irrelevant. And I guess I'm concerned because I was not aware until this hearing today that the father had been directly paying the mother. And it is true that when a parent's receiving TANF, any money they're receiving for support, either spousal support or child support, is supposed to be re reported to the community service office um, because it's assigned to the state of Washington. Uh, that is because correct. Because of the TANF benefits. They were not, they're not legal payments. He's been gifting them to me as a gift because of my <laughs> circumstances. That's, that's not how that works, Ms. Lowe. Um, so that's a concern. About that's it. not how that works. Uh, so... Um, are, are Ms. Powers and Ms. Petrie and Ms. Lowe, are you, the three of you available next Tuesday? I am. Yes. Um, Ms. Lowe, can you reach out to Ms. Powers and uh, Ms. Petrie, if we can find out how much, because uh, clearly Ms. Lowe is indicating that he, however she wants to phrase it, gifts her uh, three, approximately 250, 350 a month, or excuse me. No, a week. week a week for the last right. however Never. long uh that's something that uh, clearly needs to be taken into consideration and that's something that we can um potentially set the amount of arrearages at that amount and say that it's already been paid essentially and i think that would be uh, a resolution to this but i don't want to spend more docket time trying to figure out those numbers so understood i am um, available next tuesday all right. So, um, Madam Clerk, if we could just pass the, this matter over one week just to determine the uh, um, uh, amount of arrearages, and then I'm happy to enter a court order reflecting that amount. So hopefully that will trump the um, the administrative order that was entered that has the $5,900 amount on it. Would the court like me to have an order drafted for next week? Sure, that would be great. That would okay. be helpful. Thank you, Ms. Powers. Thank All you. All right. I'd appreciate uh, the three of you having some communications so we can hopefully get that sorted out next Tuesday. And that is the 12th at 1 p.m. All right. Thank you so much, Your Honor. Thank you. Thank you. To me, that amount of support is shocking. I mean, that's just crazy. And she's still whining about not being able to find a place to live and and not being able to find a job well i'm sure that she could rent a room she doesn't have to rent a house she could rent a room from somebody and probably only pay 400 bucks a month um maybe it's not her standard but you know she chose it just like the the attorney said this was her choice and now she's pregnant with this other guy's baby and he should be the one footing a lot of the bill for her right now the new man. That's my opinion. Let me know what you guys think. Thank you so very much for watching. And I'm going to keep up on this one. See you next time.